Hi, it's Mark Bossard from Top Local Lead Generation. We're here with award-winning uh, mechanic and auto repair specialist Bernie Pollock in Vancouver, and we're going to be talking about check engine lights. How are you doing tonight, Bernie? Excellent. Excellent. So I guess the check engine light is kind of that yellow thing that's on my dash that I don't really know what the heck it's all about. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the myths and what that lamp really means. But what happens when that thing stays lit on my dashboard all the time or on my car seems to go on and off with uh, regularity? Um, what does it mean? Well, first of all, you asked what, what happens. And sometimes you'll notice the engine runs roughly or poorly. Your gas mileage is compromised. But a lot of times you don't notice anything. The car will just run perfectly well, and there's this light that's telling you to do something. Um, what it means, uh, the, light's on, the light comes on basically to warn you that the engine computer, powertrain computer, picks up a defect somewhere in the engine, like there's a sensor that's not operating properly, uh, it's not giving the right readings, or something's not right that the computer's expecting to see. So it turns that light on when things become uh, reading beyond a certain point. So... Do I need to worry about it? Well, uh, the answer is yes and no. I mean, first of all, you should find out what why the light is on. The light can come on for uh, literally a hundred different reasons. There are uh, at least thirty sensors that that can you know can give an erroneous reading to the computer. Something can be wrong. It can be it can be as simple as your gas cap can be loose. That's kind of the simple end of things too. Um, you know, your engine's misfiring. Uh, you know, and in that case, that's that's when the check engine light's really important. If your check engine light is blinking, you need to urgently have it repaired because what that indicates is the uh, vehicle's having a catalyst damaging misfire. Like the catalytic converters are can be damaged by the way the engine's running, and you'll usually notice that the engine at that time the engine will be running rough, it'll be shaking, it won't have enough power. So that's that concern with the blinking check engine light. Get it fixed right away, or you'll spend literally thousands more dollars if you don't. Uh, otherwise, it, it needs to be looked at, but it's not as urgent. Okay, I've heard it said that, uh, let's cut right to the, the meat of the matter here. There's people saying that the check engine light doesn't really mean anything. It's just a way for you crooked mechanics to sell a whole bunch of unneeded repairs. How true is that? Well, I don't think anything could be further from the truth. I mean, there's a lot of cynicism out there, and it's mostly based on ignorance and people who don't really understand why it's there and what it does. Um, you know, basically, as I said, the check engine light, you know, it, it's it's operated by the powertrain computer, and it'll de pick up a defect. So whether that defect is big or not, if the computer thinks it is, if the car manufacturer says this is a defect, either an emissions-related defect or a performance defect, it'll cause the check engine light to come on. I mentioned earlier the gas cap. I mean, that's kind of a simple example. If you leave your gas cap off, for instance, and you drive your car, the check engine light will come on. Of course, the car's not going to run any different. It's not going to make any difference, and there's no urgency to repair it. But what's happening and the reason why that light comes on is because the manufacturer, they don't want gas fumes from your gas tank escaping to the environment. That creates a, that creates air pollution. It's very toxic to the environment. Whether you, you know, it's, It doesn't seem like it, but it is. It's very bad for the environment. So that's why you know even the gas cap, ceiling is important. Now, is it important to fix a car? I mean, that's up to you. It's your car, your choice. Um, you can do it with it what you want. The only area where you really are forced to fix it is if you live in an area where there's emission testing. Um, and then th at that point, you have to fix the check engine light at certain intervals. So I, I guess the it can be caused by just about anything from it needs a new spark plug to you know whatever so what does it cost to repair my car when that light comes on? It's a good question. Um, it really varies I mean on the low end of things you know 50 you know in the fifty dollar range to do a scan and you know something we find something extremely simple uh, up to we've had cars where it's cost several thousand dollars where the catalytic converters are uh, damaged and that causes the light to come on uh, so that's that's kind of the range. I mean, it can also come on if the engine's got a serious defect. So, I mean, the range is huge. Um, the most important thing, really, is just to have it checked out first off and just see what what's going on and how urgent it is. So there's some of, some places that are offering free code reading of my car. 
if my check engine light is on. Um, that seems like a great deal, is it? Well, it could be, but um, I mean, so another thing, like every time the check engine light comes on, it sets a, a stores a trouble code in the vehicle computer. So there are some uh, auto parts shops. I haven't seen any in Canada, but there's a lot in the chains in the U.S. where they offer free code reading. Uh, or there's you know auto repair shops that you know will, will scan your code, scan your data for free and let you know what it is. But I mean, here's a question. I mean, you're getting it for free, but what, like an auto repair shop, I mean, they're giving away their technology and expertise. Why would they do that to sell you repairs? Are they going to be honest with you if they're giving that away for free? Someone's got to pay for it. So that'd be the first thing I'd be you know skeptical of. And second, if it's an auto repair shop or something like a quick loop shop where the people have absolutely no expertise in in uh, vehicle systems, you know, you're not going to get an expert opinion on it. There's a lot of auto repair shops. I mean, they scan it. Oh, it's an oxygen sensor code. They'll sell you an oxygen sensor, wh whether you need it or not. So I think it's better to find a good, competent shop, someone you trust, someone who's going to give you an honest opinion, and uh, you know, charge you at least a fee of some sort to look at it. I think that's your best bet. So my parts place isn't exactly going to give me the the straight goods on <laughs> my check engine light. <laughs> well. Because the check engine light comes on and there's a trouble code that may say, hey, you know, oxygen sensor defect, it doesn't mean the oxygen sensor is bad. A lot of times it is, but it can also be a bad wire, it could be a defective computer, it can be any of those things. So what's really important is after the, the initial scan, then it's a matter of what diagnostic test do we need to do. So an auto repair shop, auto parts shop is not going to have that, uh, that uh, expertise to do that. Nor will they take the time because they're not being paid to do it. Right. Yeah. So it, it's just a starting place. The trouble code is just, hey, warning, there's something to be checked. Now you need an expert who knows cars, who deals with these sorts of things, and deals with your kind of vehicle to really start to be able to go through and diagnose what the problem actually is, not just it's the, the computer solves everything. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. There's a lot of mythology out there that people think, oh, these computers are self-diagnostic and it'll just tell you what you need to fix. That's not true. It's it, it's only, the trouble code only tells you there's a problem in a specific circuit and not an actual, not the actual part. It doesn't tell you that the part is bad. It tells you that this particular circuit related to this part is bad. So from there you have to do some testing. You can almost take a chance and throw the part in. Sometimes it'll fix it, sometimes it won't. And some parts can be 50 bucks and others can be thousands of dollars. So some things you don't want to take a chance with. Yeah. Well, even like on my diesel, if the glow plug isn't working, that's an expensive fix, even though the part itself isn't all that expensive. Exactly. And that's a good example. I know you have a Volkswagen TDI diesel. And on those, frequently they'll store, they'll set a, the check engine light will come on, it'll store a trouble code for a defect in a certain glow plug. But experience and repair information that we have has, has taught us that, that a lot of times the actual glow plugs are not the problem, it's the actual control unit that's bad. So uh, this is where you have to be careful because if you read the code, you go, oh, it just needs a glow plug in number two cylinder, let's put that in. Put it in and uh, a day later the check engine light comes back on because it's actually not that. So there are other things you need to test and know and, you know, if you have we have a lot of knowledge information that we can get that helps us out. Absolutely. Awesome. That, so don't ignore it. You can't ignore your check engine light. It might cost you a lot of money, basically, is what this boils down to. Exactly. I think my, my biggest advice is just have it at least initially checked you know, with a shop that you trust and get a good, honest opinion as you know how urgent is it to fix it. That's the most important thing. What are the consequences of me? This is the code. What are the consequences of me not fixing it? That's the best thing to look at. Awesome. That's one of the things I really appreciate about working with you, Bernie, is that you're always honest about here's what you could or could not do. Yeah. We're here, so, we're here to educate. Awesome. So that's Mr. Bernie Pollock. I think it's 12 times and counting. Voted best in Vancouver auto repair. Best auto repair shop and most trustworthy in Vancouver, in my humble opinion. Thanks a lot, Bernie. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. It's been fun. We'll talk again soon. You bet.